Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick, welcome to the Light and Blood channel. Today we're going to look at some of the new features in Alien Skins Exposure 4.5, which is a free update if you already have X4. Uh, but of course you can look into getting it anyway. So let's jump in and have a look at some of these new features. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is something that really does affect colour and that is LUTs. So LUT stands for lookup table. And the way it is is that uh, you can select from some that are already here, these are ones that I have around. You have some of the ones that are already existing in Photoshop, for example. There are some sample ones here, and there are some utility ones as well. If you we want, we can import our own. So I'm going to go for some that I have literally just dragged from the internet. Um, I just literally looked up free LUTs. Um, so hopefully if I click on that, we'll just open that one, and then we can actually look through them. Select them all, so that's command A, select them all, click open. So the import LUTs then brings up and it shows the names. Right, and it gives you a color space. What I'm going to do here is now normally they would be in sRGB, um, but these ones appear to be Adobe RGB, so I'm just going to bring them in as that, or I've created in Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to click import and bring them in. All right, so they're imported now. I can browse them and they are now in that Photoshop. So what we can do is we can look through them and select ones that we want. Um, so I'm just going to pick one of them here for an example because it's got a bit of a, a look to it. So I click apply to that. So that now gives a render. And of course uh, you can decide how much or little you want of it by fading it out. And you can try it in other color spaces if you prefer. So that is LUTs, lookup tables. Lookup tables are used for a lot of cinematic stuff when they come kind of from, you know, uh, movies and stuff like that. So you're able to find LUTs that will give you the look that you can create in a movie, basically. And um, there is a way of doing a match color thing. So you can get a clip online. Um, Lynn Dewis actually has a video about it where you can use match color to have a lot, create a lot so that it'll match your current photo to something cinematic. So you can grab like a French still frame from a trailer, for example, and use that as the basis for creating your own LUTs. Okay, so the next thing that they have is an extension to copy uh, from cards when you're doing import. So I have a card in here that I shot yesterday. Now, this uh, lady is in lingerie, so if that bothers you, um, you may want to not look at this next section. Um, copy folders from card. So we can see here that it springs up and we can now see that we have uh, images. We can have a preview from the card. And I'm not going to go down too far because of the fact that um, I don't want to be too revealing and stuff like that. So if I click uncheck all, uncheck all gets rid of, rid of everything. So we can come in here and by pressing space bar, we select it. And then we can use the arrow keys to move on. So let's say we want to just bring in a few of these images. All right, so they are now selected and ready to come in. Uh, you can double click to look in and you can go between single image and grid view. Um, so click on single and it will jump back out to the grid. So obviously by clicking on the words, it'll do it as well. And the other thing is that if you have multiple uh, destinations or multiple sources, you, you can click to add them and they will show up with little folders so that you'll be able to work from there. So you can actually import more than one card at the same time and select what images are coming off from those just by way of example. So if I wanted to copy these in, I would click OK. Now, I've got to choose where it's going. It says it's going to pictures. So I'm actually just going to put this into a subfolder. Uh, generate subfolder. So it wants us to generate it based on something. Uh, custom text. And the custom text I'm going to use is... Uh, Natasha, click OK, and that will bring those files in. So you can see those files are there now. <coughs> Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look at is we can actually now go to our preferences. And in the preferences, we can change our keyboard shortcuts. All 
Okay, and so if you go to shortcuts here, you can see that we have four different options. We've got creative editing, navigating, organizing, and tools. So we can open and we can see what the shortcuts are. So this is showing our shortcuts. Straight off the bat, if you go to the cog, we can see that we have this Lightroom compatibility mode. So that way it'll make the shortcuts more like the shortcuts that you're used to in Lightroom rather than having to hurt, learn a whole new set of shortcuts. Uh, but you can also edit your own and change your own. So uh, let's, for example, find something here that doesn't really have anything on it. Uh, specify collections doesn't, for example. Copy photos from card doesn't have a shortcut here. Okay, so if you want, you can come in here and try to create your own. So let me just try the Shift Command I. See if I see if I click Add, what happens? So it's actually allowing me to do that. So I'm actually able to create a shortcut that's allowing me to do that. If I was to say, like we can see here, we've got this one here. So if I was to use this one, so I can delete to get rid of that one. So let's say if I go um, Command and Square Bracket, right? This will already tell me that it's already in use, just to warn you if something's already there. And so click Reset, and then Shift Command I one. Click OK. That is now set. Okay, you can print them as well. And again, of course, if you go back, you can just delete it if you want to get rid of it completely as well. Okay, so that is just a very quick look at the shortcuts. Other things that are there, there's lots of camera additions and stuff like that, but I'm just going to grab an image here for a second. And I'm going to show you one of the other options that are here now. Uh, we have some highlight stuff turned on there. If we come down here to our overlays, and we went to light effect. So with light effect turned on, which is actually slightly jumpy because of the fact that uh, I'm recording as well, you can come in and look at some of the newer additions, which are haze and lens flare. So we go for a haze, it literally kind of creates a haze. So I click fog, and it'll set up this fog kind of around it, and you got control over the kind of shape where it is, and obviously you can set the center point. This is true as well of one of the other effects here, which is lens flare. If we could grab this gold lens flare, for example, here and choose where it's coming from, and then you can actually kind of rotate it around a little bit so that you're not limited to the just the one kind of look of it. And so that is kind of the options you have there. I mean, obviously, you can have a look and see what's in there in terms of effects like you know your rainbow ring and all that kind of stuff and the same with hazes there's, uh, like different hazes that you can have in it just to create different effects on the actual images themselves so folks that is a look at some of the new stuff that is in exposure 4.5 it's a great program i really really enjoy using it for me i'm still using it more as an image finisher but i do love the progression that they're making especially with copy from card and um, so you can actually see what's going on so you've got a way better option so you're not necessarily importing uh, images that you don't want generally speaking even with other programs if i have a missed file or a blank file like if i'm shooting at studio and there's a missed file i won't bring those in there's no point in wasting whatever 30 40 megabytes on the drive just for something that's literally a photo you can physically never use so folks, if you like what's going on here, obviously subscribe to the channel. Uh, of course, I am not as busy on the channel as I was, but I do intend doing a little bit more. I have all of these ideas for new stuff and um, just getting time to do them because I'm actually remarkably busy with uh, new business stuff. Folks, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.